So I graduated from the University of Georgia Law School in 2007, got a job here in Atlanta as a lawyer, and then the Lord turned my heart upside down by revealing the issue of trafficking to me here in the city. And in 2011, I founded a ministry called Out of Darkness. And in the journey of getting that up and running, I was meeting other ministries in the city that were doing work in the same space. And one of those was Atlanta Dream Center. So I met Patrick Palmer and the founder, Pastor Paul Palmer, and saw that our heartbeats were just completely aligned with each other. And at, the more we worked together and saw how we could impact the city, the more we realized we should be doing this together, not separate. So Out of Darkness actually merged and became a part of Atlanta Dream Center in January, 2013. So as the founder of Out of Darkness, in the early days, you're kind of doing everything. You're handling the board of directors, the fundraising side, building the team, implementing the training, going doing outreach, doing rescues. But then as the Lord quickly built an army of people who said, man, this is my passion too, then what my role has really transitioned into is empowering and equipping people to pursue God's calling on their lives and give them the avenue to do that and then to pour into other leaders so that they can lead well and that if and when the day comes when the Lord calls me away or takes me home that the ministry doesn't die with me, it will continue because there are other leaders who have the same anointing burning on them to continue it forward. I see the vision of Atlanta Dream Center as just being Find those people who are the outcasts, the lost, the abandoned, the forgotten, and take the love of Christ to them through ourselves. Be the instruments, the hug, the meal, the rescue out of an exploitive situation. Within Out of Darkness specifically, our mission is to reach, rescue, and restore men and women out of basically sex slavery, commercial sexual exploitation, so that they could encounter the glory of God and see his love for them, and that that would be what ultimately sets them free, not the physical extraction, but the freedom they find in Christ for life. It's so interesting because in outreach, you're going to people where they are and you're hoping to shine a light into their darkness and just show them what the hope and love of Jesus looks like. And then as they begin to respond to that, you offer them a way out of their circumstances and into a place where they can be fed the word and they can be discipled and mentored in the context of relationship, the context of the body of Christ so that they can grow in maturity in their relationship with the Lord. So we really try to touch both aspects of evangelizing, getting the word of the good news to them, but then also the process of making disciples where we teach them what does it mean to actually follow Christ on a day-to-day -day basis. And I wanna add this too. A lot of the, to my surprise, a lot of the women that we work with that have been born and raised in the U.S. that come into our safe homes don't even know the gospel of Jesus. We're talking about the cross and the resurrection, thinking that this is something they've heard all their lives and we're watching them just in awe of, he did what? And when he was on the cross, he said, forgive them? How could somebody feel that way, you know? So we're seeing people right here in the States that have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ before and they're hearing it for the first time. One thing I think that as the church we've, we've really missed over the years is thinking that once we lead somebody to pray a salvation prayer, now they're good. And we've missed the aspect of, well, what does that mean for my life? What does that transformation look like? What does it mean to follow Christ in the day to day and in the decisions that I face? I find the Lord, but I'm still living in a dysfunctional home, right? Or I'm still working at this job where I have a hard time getting along with difficult people. So what does it mean to bring, my whole life hasn't just changed and been brought out of where I am, but how do I bring what's inside of me now into the day to day and live the kingdom? And that's what discipleship is, is it's as we live out the kingdom in front of others, then they learn how to implement and live out the kingdom in their own lives. The Atlanta School of Ministry is a training ground where young people who say, I wanna find out what it means to devote my whole life to Jesus in whatever place he may call me can come and they get teaching, they're in the word, they're worshiping, they're praying, but they're also the hands and feet with us on the streets of Atlanta, doing the outreaches, the rescues, manning the hotline. And so as they're growing in their intimate walk with the Lord, we get a chance to pour into them and disciple them into what it looks like to follow his calling on their lives. I am is our ministry to those who are homeless and addicted and the goal with the I am program is to see holistic transformation, mind, soul, body, spirit, and that that happened through the gospel of Jesus. So we have teams that go out every Thursday night through a ministry called Compassion Night and they take out tons of meals. They take out a mobile clothing closet. We're going to be adding a shower truck to that very soon. And along with meeting those physical needs, 
every single time we present the gospel of Jesus to them as well. And then we have people, oftentimes it is the students in our school of ministry who are prepared that if someone responds to the gospel, they connect with them one-on-one -on -one and then they begin that process of discipleship. We also have case managers that will help people who are looking to get out of their circumstances, find placement in a long-term Christ-centered program where they can grow in the Lord, break free of addictions, and set a new course for their life. Metro Kids is what we would call the prevention arm of what we do. We always joke that the goal of Metro Kids is to put Out of Darkness and IM Ministries out of business. If we can go upstream and keep at-risk youth from becoming homeless or exploited or addicted, then we don't have to rescue them anymore. We can affirm in them an identity in Christ at a young age that will help them avoid a lot of the pitfalls and vulnerabilities of those who have missed that opportunity that we're now having to rescue and restore. It sounds cliche, but I tell believers out there, whether you're in Atlanta or whether you're in some other part of the world and you're hearing this, you can absolutely pray. We may never meet you, you may never meet us, but we believe that intercession inclines the ear of God to the needs that we face day in and day out. Spiritual warfare, demonic possession and oppression, um, serious physical and mental illnesses, bondage, family dysfunction. Pray as the Holy Spirit leads you and we trust that He will put His heart on your heart and that as you pray it will be for those specific needs that we face and you can see the impact and the harvest that's reaped through the prayers that you sow into what we're doing. The, so I think often about what Jesus said to pray to the Lord of the harvest to raise up laborers because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. We see that every single day. We have no shortage of people wanting help. We have no shortage of people needing mentorship and discipleship but we lack the laborers to come alongside and so Whatever you do, if you're a mom, if you're a teacher, if you're a lawyer, a doctor, if you're a gent, whatever you do, there's a place for you in this ministry. There is a need for you and the gifts and the skills and the passions God's given you. So atldreamcenter.com, get involved. We would love you plugged in and, and donating not your money, but your time to serve with us. Well, why I do what I do is simple. It's because God asked me to. And I remember when he burdened my heart with the issue of trafficking, there was an invitation in that burden to say, God, I don't know what my place is, but will you show me? If you'll show me the role you have for me, I'll do it. And as soon as I invited him to do that, he showed me what my role was. And I hear that time and time again. A lot of times we don't know our place because we never ask him what he would have us to do. So when I asked the Lord, he said, I want you to do out of darkness. And my joy now, my passion every day is to wake up and put my feet to the floor and do what God's given me the ability and the passion to do. I want to just give an invitation to the body of Christ that sexual brokenness is inside of our house too. It's not just the people out in prostitution or trafficking, but we struggle with pornography. We struggle with lust and temptation outside of our marital relationships and premarital relationships. And it's something for years and years we haven't felt comfortable talking about, but I feel like we're in a season where God is saying, I want to lift the veil of shame. Let's start to have the conversation. I want to see not judgment and condemnation, but healing and restoration take place within the body of Christ. And so you may not identify with being trafficked or prostituted, but you may have your own sexual hurts or abuse or wounds or struggles that you face. And just know that the Lord wants to come in and minister to those places too. Hi, I'm Pastor Chuck Reesh. I'm the executive producer at Horizon Media Studios. It's a 501c3 media ministry, and what we're doing is helping other ministries tell their story. Homeless shelters and children's homes, Bible colleges, seminaries, mission sending agencies. With your help, we can continue to help tell their story to inspire the world, to shine their light, and let God get the glory for the work that's being done in advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Thanks again for praying for us.